Guess who finally brought a rifle to the market? Glock did. About a year ago, I was talking about how we knew that one was coming because we found proof, and we've been impatiently waiting to see exactly what they do. Well, haha, I actually found a working unit. So, in the British Army, they're testing right now. They're running up against KA, LMT, and Glock to replace the SA-80. They're debating what rifle they're going to use. Glock submitted a rifle. So let's take a look at this rifle so we can get an idea of what we're going to expect. All right, so the rifle, the model number is called the GR-115F. Now, what comes to the civilian market may wind up being totally different. Like, as you notice in this picture here, this one's got full auto. We're not going to get that option. So let's look over it. All right, so it looks like it has an OSS can on it. Now, if you pay attention to the back of the can, that's not where it's threading on the barrel because the hole of the can is wider than the barrel. It probably uses this design right here. And what that is is so you can run a longer barrel length. However, you don't have the extension of the can on top of that. I mean, you, you still get some, but it's not overly long like if you were to just have a direct thread can on there. So the barrel probably goes about halfway into the can, and then it utilizes the whole entire can and pushes out, but it keeps the overall length shorter. I believe that is an OSS can. I don't know that for sure. The barrel... Looking at where the gas system is and the fact that it's using that can, I'm guesstimating it's 16 inches. I originally guesstimated 16 inches, but comparing it to a picture of a rifle with a 16 inch barrel, I'm now changing my answer. I think it's about a 14, 14.5 inch barrel. I could be wrong on that, I don't know. I'm not there to pull out a tape measure and check, but it looks like 16 inches. So if one does come to the civilian market, which I believe will happen and I'll explain why in a little bit, this is the barrel you're going to get with the handguard you're going to get. So the handguard they got, it's a Glock brand, which is kind of cool. They're definitely investing in the rifle because they're making their own handguards. It's an M-Lock with QD points on it. And like, as I said, as you can clearly see in the picture, it is stamped with a Glock brand. So they made that themselves. The receivers are billet, upper and lower receivers. This receiver does have something a little bit special on it. As you'll notice, there's a bolt release on the driver's side. I usually never see that on AR-15s. That's something new, so that is kind of a cool new innovation that they're bringing to the market. Um, the AR is a really good platform because it's completely sealed up, so you are making another hole in the receiver. Will that little latch become a liability? It's possible. I mean, we'll have to wait till we get them to the market and do some extreme torture testing on it to find out. I also noticed on the dust cover, they got rid of that little thing in the middle. What that thing in the middle is for, so when your dust cover is open, if you open up your receivers and you shut them, you don't bend your dust cover. So either they found a way to circumvent it, or they haven't thought about that yet. I'm assuming where it's clocked, they, they're well aware of what that little notch on a normal AR-15 dust cover is for. So I'm assuming their dust cover somehow circumvents it, or it doesn't get in the way of the lower receiver when you're putting the two together because that would be a really stupid mistake to make. You'll also see it's got plastic backup sights on it. Those obviously look like the Magpul sights. I'm assuming that Glock hasn't made their own backup sight yet. I'm assuming they will, because usually Glock likes to own everything. Like when you get a Glock pistol, there isn't a bunch of aftermarket parts on there. It's all Glock, and I think they're taking the same approach with this. It also has a Magpul stock on there. So I kind of feel like this model was rushed to the market real quick just to participate in the British Army trials. I do believe that there will ultimately be a Glock stock on there and Glock sights. All right, so as you can also see in the picture, it is a DI system. You'll look right there in the picture. You can see the gas tube coming up underneath the handguard, so that does confirm it is not piston-operated. Will they make a piston-operated option? Most likely. Chances are they're going to run a whole bunch of different models. I believe because they're also making their own receivers, they also have plans to put out AR-10s, AR-15s, Gas and piston operated, but this particular model that was sent to the Brits, that is DI, that is gas operated. Uh, I already talked about the new bolt release and I talked about the new stock. So what's going on here? Look, let's, let's sum this all up. Chances are this is your SHOT Show because they're already submitting one for military designs and they know it's not a secret anymore. They will announce that they put out a rifle, which is coming up really soon here. I think that's in September... Don't quote me on that. Anywho, um, 
I think they wanted their bread and butter to be military contracts, but in my opinion, they're a dollar late and a day short. They should have done this years ago. So will they go up against some other brand to get military contracts so that's their bread and butter? I don't think so. I think this is going to be highly reliant on the civilian market. Time will tell. So, like I said, there will likely be a whole bunch of options. You're looking at DI, piston-operated. The fact that they submitted this to the military, and almost all militaries that I know of, require the barrel is chrome-lined. That likely has a chrome-lined barrel. We'll have to wait and see. Again, like I said, I think that is a 16-inch barrel because, as you know, it's where the gas tube ends, and the fact that that's a slip-over can leads me to believe that that entire barrel length is 16 inches. So I think this is going to go to the civilian market, and that's what they're going to be dependent on. So we're going to see aftermarket Glock parts for AR-15s, which is cool. I'm assuming that most of the stuff, this is a pretty big assumption here, is generally compatible with your standard AR-15. Just by looking at the design, like they have an AR-15 pistol grip, so I have to assume that there's an AR-15 bolt inside. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I think it's pretty awesome. It would be nice because a lot of people like to match weapons. Like, for example, I like to match all my stuff FN. I like to have an FN rifle and an FN pistol. If I was a Glock fanboy, I'd like to have a Glock pistol and a Glock rifle. It's just nice. I, I'm just weird like that. I don't know. So I do think they will be successful in the civilian market when it drops, regardless of what it is. I predict, because of the billet receiver, their own handguard, the research and development that went in this rifle, it will be over a grand. I mean, we're not talking about just rebranding a billet receiver because it's got that bolt release right there. So that's something proprietary to Glock. I'm guessing this is going to be well over a grand. Is it worth it? Eh, that's up to you. I mean, the value is in the eye of the beholder. I know that's not how the saying goes, but that's how it goes for this particular saying because I said it that way, okay? <laughs> If you'd like to learn more about this rifle, we're just going to have to wait and see. Now, the person that got this story to me, this is Sean. He's got a very cool channel. What he does is military review footage, like when they're moving through the trenches and stuff like that. Very interesting, very successful. If you're interested in how the military works, check out his channel. He is a very intelligent person when it comes to military. What is up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got some footage, absolutely insane footage that just came out. This is from end of April, start of March. It appears to be trench warfare footage coming out of Luhansk. It's the first bit of extended footage that I've seen like this, so we'll go through it, we'll break it down bit by bit. We'll react to how they're moving through the trench and how it's being defended as well. Let's check it out. So a number of Russian troops there. As you can see, moving around what looks like it would have been an admin point or um, a storage point in the trench. It looks like it's been hit because it's collapsed and they're forced to move out and you can see they're firing into it there. So there obviously must have been someone, uh, a defender in that position there. Anyway, if you'd like to support the channel, I've got my Patreon right there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. Just by clicking on those particular links, even if you don't buy what that link is for, just clicking on it and doing the Amazon shopping you were already going to do anyway, that'll kick back for it because you came there off my channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.